Hello friends, I am Neeraj. So let us continue our work on our GoFiber blog application. In this blog, I am going to use MySQL database. So I have created a database also, so named Fiber blog. And uh, uh, in order to connect to our database and perform other operations against our database, so from our GoFiber application, so we need to use a third party package and uh, I'm going to use an ORM uh, named uh, called as GOM. So this is having, uh, GOM is having, has capability to support different kind of databases, including MySQL, Postgres, SQLite. So, and this is a very nice and very, I mean, very beautiful ORM for, for, Go, for, uh, for Golang. So in order to use it, so first of all, so we need to install it. So in order to install it, is uh, installation is very simple. So we will head over to our terminal and we will copy paste copy and paste it and hit enter so it will install gone and uh, since we are going to use uh, mysql so we need to also install the proper driver so like if you are going to use postgres so we need to install the driver for postgres or mysql if like in our case so since we are going to use mysql so we will install the driver for mysql as well so we will and we will say mysql so it will install the mysql driver as well so fine so let us close the terminal and uh, we have the package uh, available for us so that which we can use and uh, also i uh, i am organizing our code base into uh, mvc architecture so that is why so in order to save the time so i have created few directories like controller will have all the business logic uh, database we will open a connection in this package and models so we will have uh, models uh, uh, I mean the database tables representation into a struct and uh, we have the rotor package so we will be having all the routing information inside the rotor package so now let us uh, work one by one so first of all let us work on our database package so we will create a file and we will name it database dot go so it will be a part of package database and uh, we will need to import uh, gom and uh, other uh, the driver which we very we have installed it so better we will copy this from here itself and uh, we will paste it and uh, here i am going to create a global variable uh, that will hold the connection information uh, of our uh, after opening a connection so we will have the connection information stored in this in this database in this uh, where dbcon variable so it will be a pointer to the gong dot db so this uh, this variable is going to hold the connection information and uh, we can we will also create a function connect db and uh, whenever this function this function is called so this will open a connection new connection so we will create a variable uh, for my connecting mysql so we need to provide a dsn data sales source home, uh, data sales uh, data source name is string so this is this is this is basically a string and uh, we can very simply copy it from here itself so this this connection string will have all the connection related information so we will adjust the username and so my in my for my case the user is root and the password is neeraj and db name is fiber blog okay so once we have this so now it's time to open a connection in order to open a connection so basically we will use gom.open and uh, it returns two things first of all it returns a uh, uh, it returns a uh, the connection the, the db connection and second otherwise it returns a error as well so that is why and we will gom.open and since we are going to open mysql connections so we will say mysql.open open and we need to provide the dsn okay so second uh, parameter also it uh, we can also provide the configuration so 
we will say gom dot config and inside config maybe uh, if there is any error or uh, any db error so we can log those error as well so we will have the logger and we will say logger dot d not config default rather default logger dot default dot log mode logger dot default dot log mode and we need to provide the process so we want to uh, log the error so why there are so many errors so let me check Open the same oh, it looks to be okay. So what the error is? Actually, looks like a wrong package has been imported. So, yes, now it's okay. So, actually, a wrong package was sometimes the auto auto this this auto import feature sometimes it makes life difficult instead of making it easier. Anyway. So we have the uh, this function ready and uh, is, uh, it may returns cause database connection may return some errors. So we will we need to check that. So we will first check if error is not nil. Then we will panic and uh, we will say we will raise a panic and we will say database connection failed and otherwise if there is an error, if there is no error so we will very simply we will log a very nice message and uh, we will see connection successful okay and uh, after this so we will initialize our dbcon variable with the variable db so looks like our database connection stuff is ready and now it's time to test the connection. So in order to test the connection, so we will head over to our server file and uh, we will very simply say database. So yes, auto import, it got our package got auto imported database and we will say connect db. And now if we run our application with go run server dot go so yes uh, we have got this a string so connection got successful so this way so we can connect to our database but uh, but wait so uh, whenever our database connection has been opened so it's better to close it so however go provides the we can uh, we can uh, use uh, a defer way de i mean the defer clause to automatically one after the operation has been completed whatever uh, each and every uh, lines got executed so uh, that uh, close may so we will let me first write it so we will create a variable sql db and uh, we will say database dot dbcon dot db and uh, we will also check if error is not nil then panic error in sql connection 
otherwise we will say sql db dot close so if we go this way so the moment it uh, the, the moment uh, uh, this uh, the, the, the database connection got opened so it will automatically close as soon as this uh, this line got executed but we want the we but we want in, in the, this way that uh, after completion of all the uh, all the stuff so this con this connection got should be uh, closed so we can use defer clause so this way with uh, only with with this way so we are telling our compiler that once this main uh, main uh, this main function uh, completes its its execution then call the sql db dot close method so this way so we can ensure our database connection is not uh, lying uh, uh, open so the moment after the we completes our uh, operation so our database connection will also get closed so however so uh, there is one better way to have to have this uh, stuff so we can use the init method so and we can initialize we can create we can open the the database connection inside the init method so basically the init function uh, gets called before the main function so automatically we don't need to explicitly call the init method so rather it uh, it, it it gets called uh, it gets invoked executed automatically so this way our uh, application our code looks fine and if we rerun our application with go run server dot go so yes no problems at all so our application so our we have successfully completed uh, our database so we uh, we have opened a connection and uh, now so since the connection has been opened so now we can concentrate on our other stuffs so now it's i think like let's try to create our model as well so we will create a very basic the blog and uh, here also this would this would be a part of package model and uh, basically uh, this uh, with this model so basically our idea is that uh, whatever the database uh, tables so we will map those tables appropriately in our struct so we will also need to import gorm as well because we will need that so we will import it gorm.io and gorm and uh, after this so we will create a struct so we will say type blog and a struct so first field would be our id and uh, this i am i think i am going with the unsigned integer and uh, in the json uh, part so we can define that whatever the json representation of the this struct field is so in the json part we will see the field name would be id not the single code rather this is basically a tilt sign i mean just uh, below the escape key so this is the tilt sign okay so id so this this is the way so through which we can uh, we can map a struct field into a json uh, into a json json field and second thing we can also tell gom that what that what is what is what is this uh, this struct field is going to represent inside the table so gom and inside the gom so we can provide the uh, several options so first of all let's say we are telling that uh, this uh, uh, this id field is going to be the primary key like this and we are uh, the second field we are going to have a, a blog will have a title so title would be a string and uh, here also the json would be corresponding json would be our title and inside the gom so this is going to have so we can provide that uh, i mean many options so if we go head over to our gom documentation so here uh, i mean i would suggest to go with uh, to have a look at this documentation and it will uh, we can we can have multiple options so okay so 
like uh, first of all so let's say uh, we want that uh, this uh, this title field should not be null so we will say not null so this this way so uh, this field will uh, whenever if the, there is no value for this uh, title field so it will uh, raise an error and second we will also name the column so the column name would be our uh, it, it would be title so our name uh, name of the column would be title and uh, we want that the size should be let's say 255 characters okay and uh, so this is our blog and second we are going to have the actual post so this is also going to be a string and better i will copy this and paste it here and we'll adjust the stuffs appropriately so we will say post and this is also not null and the column would be post fine so so we have created this struct and uh, now so we can also say in database uh, guam is also capable much capable of uh, uh, auto migration as well so whenever there is any change in our database in, in our struct so we can uh, auto migrate also so we can in in our database so once the connection has been successful so we can say db dot auto migrate and inside the auto migrate so we need to provide the uh, actual model so our model was like uh, first of all so there is only one model so we have so let me uh, see whether the okay so yes the auto import got the proper one so we will say model dot blog so this way whenever we uh, restart our application and uh, we are going to use it so we should get the table created in our database so right present right now so there is no table so let me restart our application so now if we check it so our blocks table has uh, has been got, has been auto generated by our gom uh, gom uh, uh, by by our gom auto migration facility so if we head over to our structure so this is like uh, id is a primary key so title we marked it as a worker 255 and post also worker 255 so and uh, null is also marked as no so this is so this way so we have created our first model and uh, i will wind up uh, the this session for for today at here and uh, so we have completed our database connection we have created our first model and uh, now we can focus on our our writing our apis endpoints and our routing information so we will see that in uh, next session so uh, i'll till then take care and happy coding